My name is Judith, and I want to tell you about the time I had a pregnant stray dog on my land, and about the night Bigfoot tried to take her. She was skinny, too skinny for any dog, and frighteningly so for a pregnant dog. Cooler autumn temperatures had come early in Ohio, making the September morning feel more like October, and I could see her shiver as she stood between my back porch and the shed near the tree line. I had seen her the previous few days from a distance in the woods out back, but she never came close to me or the house. I guess it was the smell of my breakfast bacon that made her desperate enough to come closer. I went inside, got the three pieces of leftovers, and walked out onto the back porch. She began to run away as soon as I stepped out, so I tossed the bacon out in the yard as far as they would go, which wasn't very far. Then I went inside. I watched from the kitchen window as she ate all three pieces of bacon before returning to the trees. Now, living out in the rural areas of Ohio, it isn't uncommon to come across a stray dog, pregnant or otherwise. My recent visitor looked to be a mix of hound dog and maybe a German shepherd. I wasn't sure. She had the tan and black markings of a shepherd, but the fur was very close and short to her body. She had floppy ears, not at all like a German shepherd. Her legs were also shorter than a shepherd, and from her snout to her rear, she had a much shorter body length, looking a little squashed. In total, she was a mashup of a mutt, and well, as we all know, those are oftentimes the best dogs. Over the next week, I coaxed her closer and closer to the house, setting one of those aluminum pie pans full of food closer to the house with each meal. By the end of the week, she finally settled into the large box I had turned over on its side, lined with wet old blankets I had, and set it up against the house in the corner where the porch railing met the house. I did try to coax her inside, as it was already quite chilly and especially so at night, but she refused. I think it was only her desperate situation that forced her to give me some semblance of trust. Over the days, I came to learn about Mama, as I had begun to call her. Had a very timid, nervous nature, and was easily frightened and spooked with sounds and sudden movement. She also rarely made any noise, no sound at all, which made me wonder about her past. I didn't think it had been very pleasant. It was late one evening, and I was catching up on some reading when I suddenly heard Mama let out a long, moaning whine that turned into frantic barks. As I said, she had not made a sound the entire time she had been at the house, so I was a little concerned. I thought perhaps a bear or something else might have wandered into the yard. We weren't too far from a wildlife preserve area, and the forest behind my house did connect to other stretches of wooded area that linked into the nature preserve. And while there really weren't supposed to be any bears in our area, I knew for a fact there were some, as I had seen a couple over the years, but never close to the house and always at a distance. With this in mind, I headed to the back door and got the handheld spotlight off the shelf in the laundry room. I turned on the spotlight, flipped the back porch light on, and stepped out to see what was causing the commotion. I almost hit Mama with the screen door when I opened it up, as she had backed across the porch a good eight or nine feet away from her corner. I wasn't expecting that. I shined my light over to the left towards her box in the corner, the direction in which she had been barking, only to immediately be met with an angry roar that I felt reverberate in my chest. I didn't know much about them, but I knew immediately that what I was looking at was a Sasquatch. It stood on the other side of the porch railing, a long arm reaching out across the porch as if it had been trying to get to Mama. The spotlight was on the Bigfoot for less than a second before it pulled its arm back, then let out another roar that I felt in my chest again, and simultaneously began banging on the wooden porch railing. I should say it only banged once and broke it to pieces. I was terrified. As I said, Mama had backed up, and she began to back up even further on the porch and leaned in strongly to the side of my leg. We were about eight feet or so from the end of the porch where the beast stood, and I feared it would either climb up on the porch with us or walk around to where the steps were, when it suddenly whirled around and went running back towards the tree line. I stood there frozen and watched it run and fade into the darkness. Now, I might have only had the light on that thing for a fraction of a second, but I know what I saw. I saw the leathery face and the brownish fur that seemed to have red highlights in it. I know it had fingers of a sort, and what would have been a thumb on a human hand seemed to be just an ugly extra finger on its hand or paw. I know because they were only a couple of feet away from me as it reached out across the porch. But in my mind, those fingers were within fingertip distance. 
and it really was that arm reaching out across the porch that scared me the most. Later, I thought about that arm reaching across the porch, and I realized that that thing had to stand a minimum of seven and a half feet tall, maybe eight, and I was judging that from how much was visible of its body above the porch and railing. The porch itself stood about three and a half feet off the ground, and the land had a slope from the back of the house down to the back. I was scared beyond words, but not so scared that I didn't know I needed to get into the house. And there was no way I was leaving Mama out there to face that thing alone in the night. Whether she wanted to come in or not, I was taking her inside. I opened the screen door, planning to reach down and scoop up Mama with her big pregnant belly. But she decided for me and darted into the house with no encouragement from me. I quickly closed the back door behind me and locked it, and vaguely I was aware that that little deadbolt would offer no protection if that thing outside wanted to get in. I was still shaking as I walked around the ground floor of the house, making sure everything was closed and locked, and that every curtain and blind was closed. I didn't know why, but I did not want to look out and see that thing, and I didn't want it to look in and be able to see me. Mama hadn't left the laundry room, I realized, and walked back in to find her between the washing machine and the wall, with her nose in the corner, just standing there, shaking. Despite my best efforts, she refused to come out, and I didn't blame her. I pulled down some of the towels that I had folded earlier when doing laundry, and made a nest in the opposite corner near the entrance of the kitchen, hoping she would take to it when she calmed down. Already having an idea of her really timid nature, I decided it was best to leave her alone despite being worried about her. Actually, I thought her plan was a pretty good one, and I felt my own desire to go hide in the bottom of my closet. Instead, still feeling jumpy inside, I went to the kitchen and turned on the laptop that always sat on the kitchen table. I don't know why I expected to find an answer on the internet as to why a Sasquatch had chosen to visit my yard that night, what I should do about it, but believe me when I tell you that I read the entire internet as fast as I could looking for answers. I became very alarmed to read about how Bigfoot was known to kill dogs. I was perplexed, as most of the reports of Bigfoot killing a dog came during the time the dog was barking at it. But Mama had never made a sound, I suspected anyway, until the Bigfoot was very near. So I didn't think she drew it to the porch by noise alone. So I wonder, did it smell her? Didn't know she was there? Do they hunt by smell? I couldn't find a definitive answer, and I suspect there isn't one known to us yet. I was still reading everything I could about Bigfoot online when I heard Mama's nails clicking on the linoleum floor in the laundry room as she began to pace back and forth. First, I was glad she had come out of the corner, and then I became worried that maybe the beast had returned and she could smell it. But that was not the case. It was a little later when her breathing started picking up and she finally laid down on the pile of towels that I had made for her that I knew what was happening. Yeah, she was starting to give birth. I left the internet Bigfoot world behind and I knelt by her as her labor began. I'd been sitting with her for a while and she had given birth to her first puppy. It was a nice moment. About ten minutes later, I suddenly heard a distinctive slap against the house. It sounded as if it was just under the kitchen window, opposite of the corner of the house that overlooks the side yard. And let me add, that was the window that I had been sitting at as I was searching the internet on my laptop. Mama whimpered and looked at me with large frightened eyes and let out a half yelp. Now whether that was from pain of birth or from fear, I don't know. But I felt like yelping too. I will say that I apparently did learn a thing or two from the internet in the Bigfoot world that night online, and I knew what that sound was. If I hadn't done that research, I might have stupidly gone out to look around. Yeah, probably not. But still, I was rather nervous being in the small laundry room with the back door so close to us. But I didn't think I could safely move Mama. I had little in the way of defense, and what I did have was in the garage, and that being bear spray. And who knew how old that was? There suddenly came a succession of several slaps now against the house, and I noticed that they were coming from opposite ends. That told me there was more than one of those things out there. Then the screaming started. Now these were unlike the roar the one off the porch had given me. These were higher-pitched, long, and sustained. If the roar earlier could have been described as a roar of frustration and anger, these screams could only be described as war cries. Soon after came the sound of stones pelting the house with the window above the sink taking a direct hit. Luckily, it didn't break entirely. 
I noticed that the rock was lodged in the hole that had been made in the glass, and the rest of the window was spiderwebbed and fragmented. I don't know what the term is for that, as it looked as it would fall to a million pieces if you touched it, and you still couldn't see out of it. The rocks kept coming. I sat there, huddled in the laundry room, trying to soothe Mama. And it was at that point when I saw the kitchen window break and the stones kept coming that I decided I had to call the sheriff's department. I knew I would sound ridiculous calling in about a Bigfoot on my property, so I just told the dispatcher there was someone on my property and they had broken a window with a rock. She told me a deputy was en route and to stay inside. I crawled back into the laundry room and I checked on Mama. She had already delivered Puppy 2, and it looked like Puppy 3 was on the way. And just before the deputy arrived out front, Puppy 4 was pushing its way into the world. It was about 20 to 25 minutes before I saw the car headlights shine against the blinds in the living room window. Nervously, I stood on the front porch and told the deputy what had happened. Well, almost everything. Maybe because there were more sightings of that thing, either that night or in the area in general, or maybe because I sensed he knew I wasn't telling the whole truth. Well, the deputy seemed to be cautiously probing my story and began to ask more and more pointed questions. Although the stone throwing had stopped, I was worried that I could be putting this deputy at risk, and as I had not fully disclosed what I thought was on the property, or rather what I had seen on the property. So I stressed that he should be careful, because I was certain there were multiple, quote, unquote, people out there, because I knew the stones had been coming in from all directions. I waited nervously while he walked the perimeter of the house. I don't know what he saw exactly. I went in and I peeked from behind the curtain on the back porch after I saw him walk around that side of the house. And from there, I caught the sight of his flashlight beam bouncing around on the ground and then back to the tree line several times and then back to the ground by the porch and back to the tree line. Afterwards, he came inside and looked at the damage to the kitchen window and he asked me about the damage to the back porch railing. I had forgotten to mention that. I told him I didn't know when that happened. I think he knew I was lying. As we stood there talking, Mama whimpered in the laundry room again. He was curious what that was, of course, so I explained to him that she had been giving birth through all of this. He seemed surprised, and he poked his head in to look at her. And then he wrapped things up, and we headed out to the front porch. He advised me to stay inside for the night and to call if I had any more incidents, and he felt pretty sure that whoever it had been, they had moved on. He said he would file the appropriate reports and I could come get them for my insurance if I would like in 48 hours. I did ask if there were any other incidents recently in the area of any vandalism, and he simply said no. For what it's worth, this time, I was the one certain that the other person wasn't telling the whole truth. As he turned and went down the steps, he stopped and looked back and told me that he would make sure this area is patrolled a little more frequently. And I was happy that he had already given me his card and told me again to use it if I should need anything. There were a few more screams throughout the night, but none so close as to make me worry. I went back and sat near Mama on the laundry room floor, and by the way, Mama delivered a total of six puppies that night. Unfortunately, the last one was stillborn. But as I sat there, I thought about all the years I had lived there and had never seen or heard a questionable thing. I wondered if Sasquatch had territories or if the recent run of home building in the next county had pushed them over this way. I sat there and my mind came up with a hundred different scenarios as to what or how a Bigfoot ended up on my property that night. In the end, I didn't have any answers, and I still don't. In the next couple of days, I had the window replaced and I had the wooden porch railing repaired, part of it being replaced. Mama willingly stayed in the house, except for her bathroom breaks, which we always took out front of the house. After a few weeks, I was comfortable enough to sit once again out on my back porch in the mornings with my cup of coffee. And I began to do so more often, enjoying the beautiful display of October colors of the trees. I did see them again early one morning, but I don't really think it was the same group as the ones that were here that night that Mama gave birth to her poppies. Their fur was lighter in color, almost a tan color. They were some distance back in the trees, and they were just walking along. They seemed peaceful, but I don't think they knew I was sitting there, so I watched them until they moved out of sight. That was six and a half years ago now, and I've heard and seen nothing since. In that time, I've had a fence put in for Mama, who no longer fears going out back, but she's still timid with sudden movements and noises in general, and I guess she always will be. As for those puppies, 
Well, I found homes for them, with one of the homes being with the deputy who responded to my call that night. And by the way, he actually did stop by a few more times while he was out patrolling. He just wanted to check in. Between me and you, I believe he was actively looking for Bigfoot, but he couldn't say so. I am thankful that Mama came out of the woods and into my home that September day. She's my best friend, and along with Flower, one of her puppies I kept, we have had a lot of our own adventures and joy. And I'm really happy to say that not a single one of those adventures has ever included a Bigfoot. Judith Thanks for listening. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.